about Falcon CV Cyber Series. Um, we're so glad that you're here. I'd like to make a couple of announcements. If you're joining, joining us online and would like to view the recital program or make a donation, or make a donation, mm -hmm. okay, in support of the, our music department, uh, please see the links at the bottom, listed in the, in the description box at the bottom, okay? Um, I am so excited about uh, what we're going to experience tonight. Um, as a tradition, we open our concerts up in prayer, so please join me in a short word of prayer. Father God, we do bless you for this time. We magnify your name for all that you do. We thank you for this uh, wonderful gift of music that you've given. Um, we uh, commit this time to you, and we thank you in advance for all that you will do. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And another tradition that we've started is that every time we have the faculty concerts, uh, what we do is have um, one of the upperclassmen uh, students uh, of that particular professor introduce the professor. And I'm really excited about uh, tonight and what's going to happen with the trumpet. Uh, if you know anything about the trumpet, the trumpet is probably one of the instruments that's mentioned most in the Bible. And it's the instrument that's used to um, uh, make the call and to proceed royalty. So tonight we're going to hear that wonderful instrument as we glorify God with that sound. So I would like to call Trista up to introduce our future faculty member tonight. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second installment of the faculty recital series at Eastern University. We are very happy that you could join us either in person or online. Tonight's program will feature uh, Dr. Ed Jakubowski, Assistant Professor of Music here at Eastern University. Dr. J. came to EU as an adjunct professor in the fall of 2018 and currently teaches several courses, directs Eastern Wind Ensemble, and also serves as an instrument instructor of trumpet and composition. He is a Pennsylvania native and trumpeter who strives to be a versatile musician and continues to succeed in many facets of the music performance industry. Throughout his career, he has explored many, many avenues of jazz and classical music, an experience that greatly benefits him today both as a performer and as an educator. He continues to maintain a busy freelance and teaching schedule, playing a variety of gigs in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. As a member of several area chamber groups, orchestras, bands, and jazz ensembles, as a recitalist, Dr. J also continues to present programs for trumpet, and piano in addition to collaborating with many local musicians. Most recently, Ed has been a student of world-renowned trumpeter Chris Gecker, who describes him as a trumpeter of superb ability, capability, of performing the most demanding repertoire with total command. In addition to Mr. Gecker, he has been a student of Dr. Langston Fitzgerald, Steve Hendrick Hendrickson, John Swana, John Daniel, and Ken Brady. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy this excited to be here, but I'll talk in a little bit, so I'm very anxious to get started. Thank you. 
I'm excited to play live music in the middle of a pandemic. I'm excited that it's springtime, it's warm out, and, and that you know things are improving. So thank you again for being here. Thank you everyone who's watching online. Uh, that opening piece um, was a piece called Bagatelle by a, a, a composer who writes a lot for brass music uh, named James Stevenson. Um, it was actually commissioned by a member of the Empire Brass, a well-known brass quintet, by a member of that group called, uh, named Mark Reese. And it was meant to be a, a, a recital opener or closer. And it was also meant to be very short and to the point. Um, and it, you heard a lot of unexpected harmonic changes, a lot of Bach-like counterpoint, and, and I really kind of was drawn to it for its light, sparkling character. So moving into um, the next piece, uh, I've always had a, a, taken a liking to French music. And during my doctoral studies, <clears throat> I studied a lot of the music from the Paris Conservatory. And a lot of the music that was composed at the Paris Conservatory was composed for the purposes of, uh, of jury pieces or, or to test students. And so this would have been one of those pieces. And it was written in tribute to an early professor of orchestral trumpet at the uh, Paris Conservatory named Marie Francon. And so again, this would be intended for students. And it's going to be a short piece. Um, it's a theme of variations form. Um, it's unique a little bit because each movement can stand on its own. Um, so you'll hear an opening chorale, uh, followed by several variations, and a lot of interplay between the trumpet and the piano in a late uh, romantic impressionist style.
Um, I'd actually like to formally introduce uh, Professor John Silva, um, who's the Director of Keyboard Studies here at Eastern and also teaches music theory and tons of students and is just an all-around awesome person. Um, and I'm so thankful he's here to accompany me. He's one of the first people I've met here, and we've been playing together ever since, so it's been really, really great. Um, so John's going to actually play now one of his original compositions. I'm going to take a little bit of a breather, so John will introduce this one. Um, now the program says piece in A flat minor. Um, that was, I was actually telling you this story about it. Um, uh, maybe, now this was 15 years ago, yeah, the assistant pastor, who's now the main pastor of my church, had done a sermon talking about before Jesus, it was a piece in A flat minor, and we talked about that, and after Jesus, is a piece in F major. So maybe a month after that, I wrote a piece in A flat minor and a piece in F major to play during the service, but by that point, he, he totally forgot about the sermon, so he didn't understand the significance of, of my titles here. Anyway, so that's, that's the purpose behind the title. So this was just music that I've written, uh, that I wrote to play at during the service at my church. Maybe on a personal note, this was a, a, a good time for me as a composer, because I felt like I, I'd arrived at a place that I was really pleased with, with the sound of my pieces. Thank you. 
this, all this music that I, that I chose to play tonight is stuff that just kind of intrigues me in one way or another. And as a, as a band conductor and as someone who just has played a variety of, of gigs over the years, I've been associated with the name Morton Lauritsen, who I'm sure many people in this room have heard that name. Um, he was born in 1943, he was raised in Portland, Oregon, and he received his formal training in composition at USC, uh, where his principal teachers were Halsey Stevens, who actually also wrote a very famous trumpet sonata, uh, Ingolf Dahl and Robert Lynn, and uh, most of his catalog is, is he's known as a, a very prolific vocal composer, quite a choral composer. But he has a, a very wide variety of, of instrumental and vocal works in his catalog. So this piece was written in 1966, premiered in 1966, for another member of a very famous brass quintet, Ronald Rahm, who was a trumpeter in the Canadian brass. Um, and this was written for him, dedicated to him, and it's a piece presented in three contrasting movements, but with a lot of unexpected twists and turns um, within each movement. And uh, a lot of interplay uh, between the piano and the trumpet. So this is truly a sonata, truly chamber music, where both instruments are, are, are really treated equally. This has been a lot of fun to put together, but by no means easy. So. Hope you enjoy. This is a sonata for trumpet and piano. And
about the second half, and then we'll continue on.
I always enjoy playing new music. I like to talk to composers about things. And so this was one thing that I, I, I stumbled upon, really. And I had a chance to kind of converse with the composer, who hopefully is watching. Um, and she's over in, in England. And um, this piece is called Unto the Rainbow. And it was commissioned by a gentleman named John Rubenstein. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. John Rubenstein is the, uh, the master of the worshipful company of chord wieners. You know what this is? John, you probably know this. So, so the worshipful company of all these things, they're like the oldest like established like guilds in London. So basically, this is the, a group of shoemakers. And they were, they were having a, um, an extravaganza for blind people. And Cheryl Francis Hood was, was commissioned to write a piece for this, and it was meant to be, uh, the, the event itself was a charitable event, and it was meant to be a festival of touch, voice, color, and Shakespeare. Very rich. Uh, and, and its purpose was to raise awareness for the needs of the blind and the visually impaired in the community. So I was also drawn to that whole thing, too, and I'm very much you know, into, uh, I'm a texture person. With, with music, I like things that have that have different types of texture. So, um, before we start this, I'd like to just read a little bit of of, uh, of a verse that the composer has printed at the top of the score, and then I think we'll kind of help to paint what I'm about to play. To gild refined gold, to paint the lily, to throw a perfume on the violet, to smooth the ice or add another hue unto the rainbow. And that's a tribute to William Shakespeare. So here we go. This has been so much fun to rehearse and put together. And this is so outside of my wheelhouse and my comfort zone, but that's why I'm doing it. So here we go. We have a very sophisticated method here of stopwatch and computer. So, you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's do it.
I'll save that till later. Um, <clears throat> so this next piece, I'm going to invite my very good friend of many years now, who is um, also on the faculty here at Eastern, and I'll get to that in a second. So, but let me talk about the piece for a minute. So Moon Marked is our next piece, and it was written for my uh, last teacher, Chris Gecker. It was commissioned by him. And of course, I studied with Chris as part of my doctoral studies at the University of Maryland, and he's been a really influential force in my life for lots of reasons, in my musical life and in my personal life. And so Chris introduced me to Carson Kuman's music several years ago, and I performed some of his works before, and I'm, I'm, I'm drawn to them as I am to other music that I really enjoy. And so again, joining me on this piece with my very good friend of many years, Dr. Stephanie esposito Olsis. Um, and here at Eastern, she is, uh, coordinates music history and teaches music history, and we're so happy to have her here. Uh, a few notes from the composer on this, and then we'll set up chairs and get started. Um, it starts with a figure um, that you hear at the very beginning of the work, and it kind of forms the basis of the entire thing. It's a very quick moving little rhythmic figure called, and it's similar to what it's called an acacia um, And it has a very loose poetic image uh, behind the music. And the composer says it's one of internal transformation after passing through a shared experience. So he says that some astronauts comment on how they're forever changed uh, by their space voyages. When they come back to Earth, uh, they're never really quite the same. And so in this piece, after a really largely energetic opening section, two slower intersections explore different kind of tonal landscapes. And in the second of the sections, the two of us actually play completely uncoordinated metric music. Um, that basically we both kind of freely float in space and end together. Uh, and then the opening music returns at the end um, in a slight variation. So this is, again, has turned out to be one of my favorite pieces to play. Uh, so let's get set up and we'll start and play when you want. Thank you. 
couple tunes left, and this is the jazz portion of the night. And um, when I when I was when I was approached by by Stephen Ford to do this recital, I was thinking right away that I I want to do something for my dad. Uh, my dad passed away this past August, and it was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to deal with in my entire life. And I needed to do something uh, to pay tribute to my dad. So I need to just put a little bit of history behind this piece. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce again uh, Josh Gunther on piano and Professor Nimrod Speaks on bass. And they're going to be my rhythm section for the next couple tunes. Um, so this is a jazz arrangement in two parts. Uh, the main melody that you're going to hear first, that I play on Blue Horn, is drawn from uh, melodic material that caught my attention on an album of Native American flute music that my wife and I have had in our collection for years. Uh, the Grand Canyon is one of our favorite places on Earth. We visit there annually. Um, so long story short, we have this, this CD of music written by this Native American flute player named Travis Terry. Really, that's all I know about him is his name, and that he's from uh, the, the Gila River Pima Nation, which is a, a known tribe in Arizona. Um, and it's from a, uh, an album entitled Grand Canyon, and each track is supposed to depict something about the Grand Canyon, either a viewpoint or an animal or something like that. Um, and so this particular tune, Condor, is the first track on this album. And it really called to me uh, since, you know, my father had recently passed, loved the Grand Canyon, loved Native American history, loved the outdoors, and loved wildlife. And my wife and I were fortunate enough to take my parents on a trip out there, oh, I guess it's about 2008 or so. And it was the only time that we ever saw condors flying above the Grand Canyon was on that trip. And so another reason why I kind of connected to this tune. And so um, it's going to be, again, a tune in two parts. You're going to hear the main melody, and then the other half of it is a minor blues. And so we've had a really fun time putting this together. And so without further ado, here's my arrangement of Travis Terry's Condor.
Before I play the last tune, I'd just like to thank a few people. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Josh Gunther. Um, you know, Josh, I come to Josh with these crazy ideas, and I'm like, want to do this with me? He's like, sure. Let's do it. I'm like, it's weird. He's like, I like weird. It's good. So we're weird people together. It's great. Um, and thank you to Dr. Stephen Ford. Thank you to John Silva. theme song for the Harlem Globetrotters. Most people are like, oh yes, I know that. So, um, you, so if you know the tune, you can kind of hum it along as we're playing this kind of crazy melody that Miles Davis wrote when the same chord changes. Um, but it's just a really great bebop head, and it's just has always been one of my favorites. And then um, following this, uh, we're going to have a little, a little, one more little surprise thing um, to finish the night, uh, and that'll be the end of everything. So again, thank you for coming out. A couple more things left, and hope you enjoy Dig. I'm not saying this. I'm making him right work on this one. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so for a little encore, I wanted to invite uh, Krista up to play um, a duet that we actually played yesterday as part of a little um, recital here on campus. And, you know, um, it's been great since, since the minute I got here. Krista was, like I mentioned, John was the first person that I kind of like got together with to play. And Krista was my first student. And so um, we've been on quite a journey together since I started here. And, and we've had a lot of really, really good times. So um, I definitely wanted to acknowledge Krista both as a trumpet player and a composer. And so we're going to end with this little duet called Chase. He did it. I did. <laughs>